Okay, welcome to uh, module three. This is the uh, project one rental car, very simple rental car cost estimator. In this project, we will collect customer input, calculate the cost from the customer input, display the results to the customer, and when you get to the uh, the end of this, you're going to print out a summary, and you'll print out this information right here. So. Uh, I just want to say quickly, I use uh, PyCharm as an IDE to uh, test out my code. And if any of you guys have been having problems with uh, Codeo accepting your code when PyCharm is working, you're not alone. Sometimes a Codeo is looking for some specific things and will fail your uh, checks if you don't have what they're looking for. So just keep in mind that um, Codeo is looking for uh, specific items. Okay, uh, as we start here, the first thing they're wanting is for us to uh, input customer data. So they want us to uh, start out with the question budget daily or weekly rental and as you can see, I've already populated this with the uh, code that goes in here. And uh, I just want to also show you that it does not call for this, but I use an upper operator here at the end of this uh, at the end of this code. And that's just in case someone types in lowercase uh, b. D or W, it'll automatically change it to an uppercase. And just so you know, if you're testing this code and you don't have this upper on here, you you enter a lowercase B, D, or W, you'll get uh, error messages, and it it will not work. So I just put the up, dot upper operator so that if uh, when testing this code, you input a lowercase, it'll automatically change it to uppercase and fix it for you. So, um, this is your first uh, statement right here, rental, rental code input. And like I said, I added the upper. It isn't necessary, but it's helpful when you're testing it out and you don't want to constantly hit the shift button. Okay, and once uh, once you uh, enter that in, they're looking for the uh, time period. So you have uh, three options, budget, daily, and weekly. For the options budget and daily, we put in the code. We'll do an if-else statement, and we'll put if rental code is equal to B or rental code is equal to D, rental period equals uh, integer input number of days rented and this is another thing I was having issues with in Codeo is the int integer um, sometimes sometimes they were giving me error messages when I had an in integer in here and sometimes they were giving me error messages when I left it off so it took uh, several different tries going through here to get that uh, to work and after you do that, then you will do the else rental period equals number of weeks rented. So uh, at the uh, at the end of that, it wants you to put your uh, let's see where I can find it here. Add code to print rental code and rental period variables to check your work. So. Uh, that's what this is right here, and if you leave this off and you go to check it It will not pass so make sure you leave you leave your uh, print Statements on there, so it'll pass Down here on calculation part one It's asking for the uh, budget charge daily charge weekly charge and you can see that information is here and so we're just establishing these variables for the budget charge, daily charge, weekly charge. And then right below it, we'll do an if LF statements. So we'll say if rental code is equal to B, base charge equals 
Now I put the float in here because uh, as you can see when you're going on on some of these checks they'll want uh, decimal numbers and so if you use an integer it'll be a, a number without the decimal so I put the float in just to give us those decimal numbers and finally when you get down here to the print statement uh, I just want to point this out if you if you use this uh, format comma period to F what that'll do is it will put the comma in the uh, third number over so if you have like 1000 it'll put one comma zero 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 in the in the decimal to F that means two places to the right of the decimal so that'll stop it uh, to you know one thousand dot zero zero it'll stop there so just want to make that point that out to you for this uh, print statement right here and you'll see if you've done some of these checks uh, without this formatted you'll only get one zero uh, so it will fail and uh, you'll need to put this in there like that in order to pass this uh, first uh, collect customer data check so alright we'll go on to the next page and here we have uh, collect customer data part 2 collect mileage information prompt the user to input the starting odometer reading expect type integer from the user so <clears throat> here again we'll go down here to uh, odometer so we're creating the variable uh, let's see here auto start for odometer starting odometer and auto end for ending odometer and when you get both of those you need to calculate your total miles so calculating your total miles is going to be total mi miles equals in integer auto end minus integer auto start so um, here again, I had the in integers up here. So you could you could format this with the integer up there, and I had it that way. It was giving me errors, so I put the integer down there, and it went through. And PyCharm, it will work up here as well, but Codio is a little fickle, so I had to move it down here, and it works down here. Again, you have to put your uh, print statement. This is to just check to make sure that your numbers are printing out. So they would like for you to put the print auto start, print auto in, and then print total miles. So um, as you do that, just uh, go down and put your print statements in. After establishing your uh, start and stop miles, what we're going to do is calculate your mileage charges. And so, uh, one of the things they're asking for is, let me see if it shows it over here. No. Okay, so you'll find that as we're going along here, they'll take part of your code and they'll create another file up here. You'll see that. And so, we didn't do this. They did that automatically. So they'll take your code, create another file when you switch over to the next page. So some of this uh, coding here will also show up on the next page as you go along here. So uh, let's do that. Okay, and as you can see here, this is where they're doing the uh, charges for part one. And I wanted to just see here. Uh, see the base charge for the rental type equal to the variable base charge. The base charge is the rental period times the appropriate rate. For example, finish the conditional statement by adding the conditions for other rental codes. Okay. Well, in this uh, in this section, what we're doing is we're we're determining how much the. Uh, Oh, sorry about that. My daughter just ran into the room and needed my attention, so I had to pause, and I completely lost where I was. So, let's just see here. 
I think we uh, we went over the okay. So uh, if rental co equals B or rental co equals D, rental period equals. So for the B and D, you're getting the number of days for the week. You're going to get the number of weeks rented. So you're just establishing the rental period for each. Um, print rental co print rental period calculations one okay this is the uh, the charges for each budget daily and weekly and down here we are calculating the base charge so uh, we're using the float to make sure we have a decimal number rental period times budget charge and we're doing the same thing for each and then just uh, as I've said before uh, this uh, format right here gives you two decimals and it gives you a, uh, a comma if it's more than a thousand dollars so it'll give you a comma on the left side as well so that's the format for that and we'll move on to the next section okay now like I said before when you're filling this out in the previous sections the uh, Codio will take some of your script and move it over here to the to the right side. So, um, calculating charges part two. Let's just see here. Okay, so here, what they're trying to do is get the mileage charge. So, not only do you have the base charge, you also have mileage charge if you go over the uh, limit on miles. So, let's. Uh, now again, um, I can't recall, but I believe sometimes uh, we're putting the same information again that we put in previously. So if this, if the uh, odometers readings aren't showing up here, you're going to need to type them in again in order to uh, pass your check. So just make sure that you got your uh, rental code input in and your odometer inputs uh, to make sure that you pass. You're gonna you're gonna need both your starting, ending, and total miles. So uh, right here is where we'll do the uh, budget. So for the budget miles, you're getting charged 25 cents per mile all miles. So it doesn't matter. There's no uh, free miles on this. So you just do a real quick if statement if rental code equals B mile charge will equal 25 cents times your total miles so you'll print that up and the next one is your code D which is your daily if you use that code what they're telling you is you get uh, 100 miles free per day so what we need to do is calculate our average daily miles. So you take your uh, total miles divided by the amount of days, your rental period, and that gives you uh, that gives you how many miles per day that you're going to uh, use the car. And so if it's less than 100 miles, you'll get charged zero. And then you use the LF statement, LF average daily miles are more than 100 miles your extra miles equals average daily miles minus 100 and then your miles charge is 25 cents times extra miles so you're you're calculating your average daily miles for the time you had it if it's more than 100 per day then your extra miles will equal your average daily miles minus 100 because you're given 100 miles per day so that's your extra miles and then your charge for your mileage would be mile charge equals 25 cents times extra miles so that's how you calculate your uh, charges for your extra miles on the daily and then down here for the weekly we do uh, if LF statements and for the weekly charge you're getting charged $100 if you go over 900 miles so you get charged $100 per day. So to write that, you'd put if rental code equals W, average weekly miles equals 
So what you're doing, you're creating your average weekly miles, the same thing you did up here. Average daily miles, you're just doing average weekly miles. You're allowed more, you're allowed 900 or less. So average weekly miles will equal total miles divided by your rental period, which is your the weeks that you rented it for. If your average weekly miles are less than 900, there is no charge, so mile charge equals zero. Now if average weekly miles is greater than 900, your mile charge is $100 per day, per, per week. So, and here again, you'll see I have the integer in here. Uh, some of these, some of these uh, codes will will give you uh, errors in uh, Codeo, but not in PyCharm. But uh, this is what I had to do to get it to work in Codeo, so it is what it is. So we'll move on to the next section here. <coughs> Rental summary. Okay, in this section here, um, all we're doing is one more calculation and then the uh, the summary of, of the uh, all the inputs and in the, in the final calculations. So the only additional code is going to be here amount due. So this is our newest, this is our only new variable amount due and then that's going to be base charge plus mile charge and <coughs> excuse me and if you go down here to the bottom uh, you have your print rental summary and then you have print rental code, print rental period, print starting, ending, miles driven, and print amount due. And once you uh, finish that and you check it, uh, everything will check out okay. And so I'll just go over it one more time. So this is kind of the, the whole shebang here. And... The only, the only added code here is this one, amount due, and then down here at the bottom, you're going to go print rental summary, print rental code, and then print rental period starting, ending, miles driven, and amount due. So uh, this is what it'll look like when you check it. And we'll go to next. Okay, and to complete your project, they want you to remove all the uh, code, which I have not done yet. So if you're looking at this, this is my code mixed in with their comments. So I have to go in here and comment it. And I'm sure you guys know what to do on that. So I'll let you guys do that. But uh, remove all their comments and just uh, put your own comments in. And then uh, you're done. And uh, thank you for watching. and. Please subscribe. Thank you.